Dynamic Ship Simulator 3 is the third game in the Dynamic Ship Simulator series, and is over 6 years old as of the time I'm making this video. Throughout these 6 years, a lot has happened, and in this video, I'll be going over all of the major things that have happened throughout DSS3's life. I'm going to start off where it all began, March 10th, 2017. On March 10th, 2017, Dynamic Ship Simulator 3 was created. However, it wouldn't be until 2 weeks later that you could actually play the game. 15 days later on March 25th, DSS3 entered Alpha. During the Alpha period, the bulk carrier was given to you for free as your starting ship. At the time of the Alpha release, the only island was Bornholm, and there were very few ships available to use. Alpha access was able to be purchased for 50 Robux. On this day, the first video of DSS3 was uploaded to YouTube. This video was uploaded by Captain Marson and showcased the wakes. In the background, you were also able to see the only island, Bornholm. On June 1st, Update 4 added the cruise ship, light container ship, the radio, the ability to run, and the ability to delete ships. At the time of release, the cruise ship was only 250,000 credits and the light container ship was only 25,000. On June 6th, a new saving system was introduced. As a result, all previous stats were reset. The basic starting tools were also added in this update. June 15th was the day that the first DSS3 video uploaded by a community member was uploaded. Actually, this person uploaded three YouTube videos on this day, with each one showcasing the light container ship delivering cargo. On July 6th, Volin was added. The Vanguard class submarine was also added for 700,000 credits. Around this time, the DSS3 wiki was created. However, it wouldn't really start to receive any edits until 2018. On August 14th, Update 9 brought multiple new vessels. Included in this update were the Icebreaker, Two-Masted Sailing Yacht, Ocean Racing Yacht, and Houseboat. Ice Sheets were also added in this update. One month later, Update 10 added the Oil Tanker. At the time, it costed 120,000 credits and made 5,000 credits per nautical mile. Only 8 days later was Update 11 added. This update added the best cargo ship so far, the Alabama class container ship. The Alabama originally costed 200,000 credits. The jet ski was also added along with the custom jet ski textures game pass. On October 6th, Update 12 brought the fishing cutter, credit purchases, oil spills, daily rewards, and the fishing mechanic itself. At the time, the fishing cutter actually costed 20,000 credits instead of it being free like how it is today. Around October 12th, the DSS3 developer roadmap Trello was created. However, at the time, it was called the DSS Build List. October 29th was a big day for DSS3. On this day, DSS3 entered beta and left alpha. Players who had purchased alpha access for DSS3 received the gaff rigged schooner. This update also added the shrimp trawler, shipyards, and the extra tools game pass. Like during alpha, the bulk carrier was the starting ship during beta. Beta access could be purchased for 25 robux. Update 15 was released on December 2nd, and with it brought the Tamar class lifeboat, Visby class corvette, Lublin class landing ship, and the lifeboat station on Volin. Although not an official update, on December 12th, Sea Land was added to DSS3. In the last update of 2017, Update 16 brought the Heavy Bulk Carrier, Ship Alarms, and a badge for meeting Captain Marson in-game. The Heavy Bulk Carrier costed 400,000 credits and made 12,000 credits per nautical mile, making it the new best grinding ship. The lobby was also changed to a winter theme on this day. 2017 saw the most amount of updates for DSS3 out of any other year, which is to be expected considering it was DSS3's very first year even existing. In total, 17 vessels were added, one island was added, and of course, many features and different systems were added. January 7th marked the first update of 2018. 2018 was a very big year for DSS3. Update 17 added the Ithna class offshore patrol vessel, LCVP Mark II, the motorboat, and distress calls in the form of the SART or search and rescue transmitter. On this day, DSS3's testing game, TestoWave, was created. A few public tests would later be held in this game, however it is now closed to everyone except for staff members. April 9th was perhaps the most important day in DSS3's history. On April 9th, DSS3 was officially released and could now be played for free. The release of DSS3 also brought a new island, Hobbelon, along with the European class ferry and a new menu. Update 21 introduced the Trafalgar class SSN, light freighter, and the fishing trawler. 
17 days later, the DSS Community Discord server was created. This server now goes by the name Bad Yachts. Two days later, Update 22 brought the Fireboat to the game. A month and a half later, another large update was released. Update 23 included the new best grinding ship as well as a huge island. Tenerife was added alongside the T2-class carrier on this day. Update 24, which was released on July 6th, was another decent-sized update. In this update, Good TM was revamped, the fire extinguisher was added, and the ocean floor was made deeper. It was around this time when the infamous Island Nations roleplay, better known as INRP, was created. This roleplay went on for multiple years, and many quite cool things happened throughout its lifetime. A couple of weeks later, Update 25 introduced Xbox compatibility as well as a revamped Visby model. A while later on October 24th, the police boat was added. At the time it was added, it was the third fastest boat in the game. In this update, the previously ongoing memory leak was also fixed. A bit less than a month later, Monster Nuclear became the first person to reach 100 million credits, and as a result, the credits leaderboard was set on fire. On December 1st, Update 27 introduced one of the biggest new features. In this update, guns were made functional. A sunken ships category was also added to the global leaderboards. The pirate badge was also added in this update, however there was not yet any reward for obtaining it. In the last update of 2018, Update 28 added the Shoal class Corvette for people who had the pirate badge. So as I'm sure you can see, 2018 was a pretty good year for DSS3. Just to summarize, 10 vessels were added, 2 islands were added, DSS3 can now be played on Xbox, and DSS3 was officially released, not to mention the many other things that happened in this one year period. In the first update of 2019, Update 29 added the Amphion class SSK for alpha testers and the gaff rigged schooner was given to beta testers. However, alpha testers were still allowed to keep their gaff rigged schooner. The Amphion was also given to people who had obtained the Elite Captain Badge in Dynamic Ship Simulator 2. 11 days later, on March 22nd, Update 30 added the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, which was the first ship to have a Sea Wiz system. 15 ship skins, missiles, and the quests War for Penguins, Test Bed, and Fallen from the Sky were also added. As a result of these three quests being added, the Sea Shadow and SpaceX drone ship were added, as well as the Wartime skin for the G2 class carrier. The Historics Game Pass was also put up for sale, but at the time it only included the CSS Virginia and USS Monitor. The new menu GUI was also added in this update. This was a huge update. In fact, the majority of the updates in 2019 were quite big. The additions of missiles and quests alone made this update extremely important. On April 1st, the very first April Fool's update was added, however it was not officially listed as an update. On April 1st, the Thanos boat was put on sale for 1,000 Robux. To date, this is still the most expensive game pass to ever be in DSS3. On May 16th, Update 31 added Rudin to the game. Rudin was the fourth island to be added into the game. In this update, a bunch of other small things were added and changed, however, the only big thing in this update was Rudin. Only a tiny bit over a month later, on July 27th, Update 32 added another brand new island. This island was Puerto Ushuaia, and it was the fifth island to be added. It was also now the second biggest island in the game. The search and rescue boat was also remade, three ship skins were added, and 140 flags were added. One of the skins added was the Adelaide skin for the Oliver Hazard Perry, which was the very first time that VLS appeared in TSS3. Two submarines were also added in this update, the Los Angeles Class SSN and the TR-1700 Class SSK. On November 2nd, Update 33 introduced the remade version of Volin, Underwater Sea Life, Revamped Swimming, the Mosquito Quest and Osa Class Missile Boat, as well as the Scuba Gear Game Pass. Underwater Wrecks were also added in this update. This was yet again another big update. In the last update of 2019, Update 34 was released on December 15th. This update bought the Krivak class frigate, Freyer class trawler, and added the Unite class corvette to the Historics Game Pass. At the time of release, the Freyer only costed 500,000 credits instead of the 650,000 it costs now. It was right around this day when Opopile became the first person to reach 1 billion credits. He would later receive the Triple E class Suez Max for this massive accomplishment. 2019 saw the introduction of two new islands, 13 new ships, and 4 new quests. Volden was also remade and many new skins were added. The Thanos boat also began a reoccurring tradition and was one of the three game passes added that year. 
Update 35 was the first update of 2020. This update added the Fletcher class destroyer, fleet, some flags, radio ship donations, and a new map and compass. With the addition of fleets, this update was quite important. Whether you like them or not, you can't deny their prominence in the game today. April 1st saw the addition of the first April Fool's ship pack. This pack came with three ships, the Super Battleship Shoald, Dragonfly, and Battletug. Also added in this update was the infamous Bikini Bottom, the most unknown location in the game. A bit over a month later, on May 10th, Update 37 was released. This update was very large and added the V2 rocket launch event, a Greygoth 4 badge, Spar Viero class patrol boat, sailing catamaran, victory ships, charters, fishing V2, Rudin V2, 38 new flags, the cannon fodder quest, and the patrol boat river Mark II. At the time, their reward for obtaining the Agregat 4 badge was the Spar Viero class patrol boat instead of the S100 class Schnell boots like the reward is today. The Triple E class Suez Max was also added, and Sayonara and Opapile became the first two people to receive it with the release of this update. They both received the Triple E because they were the first two people to reach 1 billion credits. Exactly one month later, on August 27th, the Bad Yacht Twitter account was created. This account is primarily used for posting teasers of upcoming updates and for other announcements. It was around this time when Sayonari was at the top of every single leaderboard, and for a long time, nobody was able to get past them. Despite not playing much anymore, Sayonari still holds the number one spot on two leaderboards. A few days later, around August 31st, Saniac received the third Triple E class Suez Max. He received it because of the multiple DSS3 videos he made that brought many new players to the game. A couple weeks later, the infamous Perseus quest was added. However, it would still take a while before people actually started figuring out how to do the quest. In the end, very few people did ever complete it while it was still around. The last major thing to happen in 2020 was on December 27th. On the 27th, Jorbunga gave away some DSS-3 assets for free, the Police Boat, European Class Ferry, Alabama Class Container Ship, and the Tamar Class Lifeboat. 2020 saw less updates than usual, but still delivered a ton of new content. 8 new vessels were added, 9 if you want to include the Triple E, and 10 if you want to include the Charles de Gaulle, which was the Perseus reward. 2 new quests were added, the V2 rocket launch event was added, and of course, the addition of fleets was another huge feature added in 2020. On January 2nd, the first update of 2021 was released. Update 38, also known as DSS3 2.0, was ginormous and added the most amount of content ever in a single update. This update completely rearranged the positions of the islands and remade Bornholm and Hobbelon. This update also added the Sturgeon class SSN, Willemo's class missile boat, and the steamboat to the Historic's Game Pass. The S100 class Schnell boot was also added, and it was made the reward for obtaining the Agregat 4 badge, replacing the Sparviero. Four new game passes were also added. The Submarines Game Pass was one of them, and added the Nakin class SSK, Foxtrot class SSK, Nautilus class SSN, and the Skipjack class SSN. The other ship's game pass that was added was the DSS2 ship. Game Pass. This Game Pass included the DSS2 Visby, Hydrofoil, LNG Carrier, Typhoon, Amphion, and U-Boat. The Extra Mobility Game Pass was also added, which includes multiple means of transportation. The last Game Pass that was added was the Extra Roleplay Options Game Pass, which includes multiple features to enhance roleplays. Another huge set of features added were radar, sonar, torpedoes, and other underwater weaponry. A few ships were also slightly remodeled and multiple skins were added. The last of the big features added in this update were were titles and morphs, however it should be noted that there were also multiple other smaller things added in this update. This update alone added 14 vessels along with tons of huge new features. With an update this big, I think you can see why it was called DSS3 2.0. Just four days after the release of DSS3 2.0, the Bad Yacht merch store was opened. Along with the merch store opening, the Spar Fiero class patrol boat was re-added as a reward for buying a piece of Bad Yacht merchandise. One day later on the 7th, Titanium95 became the 4th person to receive the Triple E. He received it because he was a very active community member and did a very large amount of work on the Dynamic Ship Simulator 3 public lists. On a March 5th, Update 39 was released. In this update, the Medium Coaster was added as well as the Colonial Wind Game Pass. This Game Pass included the India Man, Ardent Class 3rd Rate, Tudor Carrick, Washington Class Brig, Pickle Class Schooner, and the Concord Class Frigate. Multiple other things were also added, such as a new water texture, seagulls, crouching, red sand radio, and the Bornholm Airport. Many PvP tweaks were also made in this update. 
On April 1st, the second April Fool ship pack was released. In this game pass were the Isthmus class battleship Sholololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololololol
On Christmas Day, Update 44 was released. Included in this update were the Atlantic 85 lifeboat, Volvo Ocean 65, Sea Cloud, MacDuff 20 meter and twin rig trawlers, and the Inshore trawler. The ability to disable collisions and to select PvP modes was also added in this update. Along with that, the prices for purchasing credits were also cut in half. This was the last update of 2022. 2022 brought 18 new vessels and a ton of changes that overall made the game a lot better. On May 7th, the first and only update of 2023 was released. Update 45 brought the Carpathia, Ace Class Roro, America's Cup 75, H Class Hovercraft, Mariah Class Commuter Ferry, 25 Meter Police Boat, Tollycraft 26, and the Tiki Bar Boat. With the release of the Ace Class Roro, the new best grinding ship was added, dethroning the LNG. The last major thing and most recent thing to happen to DSS3 was on September 21st. On this day, DSS3 ownership was transferred from Captain Marson to Bad Yacht Studios. And with the ownership transfer out of the way, that is the last of the major things to happen in Dynamic Ship Simulator 3's over 6 year life. Keep in mind there may be a few things that I missed, or maybe even a few things you thought might have belonged in this video. I tried to gather all of the biggest things, but it is likely that I missed a few. However, if you did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. This video took a very long time to make, so I really hope you all enjoyed it. For those of you who may be interested, my Discord server is linked in the description. But until next time, I will see you all later. Bye!